Back when I was taking on residential organizing clients, I would get a phone call every so often from a frustrated homeowner who was looking to hire help. They would want somebody to come clean their home once a week and they would ask for my rates. And then they would say, well, why do you charge that much for cleaning? And I would have to explain the difference between organizing and cleaning. I would tell them that they definitely would not want me as their cleaning lady. I am horrible at it, but I love organizing and I'm great at systems. And some people would understand and some would not. But this is a really important distinction to make, and it's the main point of this lesson. While I have the highest amount of respect for people who know how to clean well, that is a very different profession from being a professional organizer. The organizing and productivity industry is made up of people who are very skilled problem solvers. We are rapid fire decision makers, and we thrive on this type of systems thinking that we've been doing. We're highly focused on psychology and human behavior, and we always make sure that we find customized solutions to work with your personality and your habits. So the point I'm trying to make here is that setting up and organizing systems is very different from maintaining those systems. It's not the same thing by any stretch. Organizing and cleaning services may have you know, some overlap in tasks here and there, but they are two vastly different uh, endeavors with very different outcomes. And based on what we've just discussed in the previous video, I hope you can see that. To truly transform your space and your environment and streamline your life, you have to recognize that organizing, tidying up, and cleaning are not the same thing. In fact, confusing these three things will actually undermine your efforts to create a sustainable and organized space. It doesn't matter where that space is, if it's digital or physical, at home or at work, or what type of clutter is involved. The underlying problem is the same. It's your systems that need help. So I'll say it again, you cannot maintain a system that does not exist, nor can you set up a new system and then expect it to maintain itself. Constantly tidying up without ever going through the organizing process is gonna become a never ending cycle of frustration and exhaustion because you're gonna find yourself repeatedly dealing with the same stuff over and over again. The same mess is gonna come back. The clutter is going to resurface because there is no system in place for it. You haven't solved the actual problem, you've only taken a stab at the symptom. And the same thing goes for cleanliness. You know, Your home will never be clean if you keep organizing and organizing, but you ignore the maintenance part. In that situation, your home might look very organized, but it's also gonna be dirty and dusty, and that can be equally frustrating. So the steps all need to happen, but they need to happen in the right order. And that's yet another system. To keep your environment as neat as you'd like it to be, you have to understand what the differences are here and how they all fit together as a puzzle. And this is especially true for us business owners because we have a lot of balls in the air and we cannot do everything ourselves. So we have to learn how to delegate to others. And you can't do that without understanding this. So there are three steps here. Step one is organizing. That means setting up your systems. Step two is tidying up. That means clearing bottlenecks. And step three is cleaning. That means maintaining the system long-term. The organizing process, like I said, is the first step here to an effective system. This is the project where we decide on what the new system is gonna look like, how it's gonna function, and what needs to be in place for it to work. It involves looking at daily habits, ideal goals, current challenges, and more, all to come up with a solid plan that's gonna work. And it also includes several sub-steps, for example, consolidation and decluttering, to make sure that you focus only on what you need to keep. There's no point in organizing things that you're not gonna keep, right? So we need to take a long, good, hard look at everything we have and make sure that we're not dealing with anything that's superfluous. The organizing process, the first phase, is actually a very decision-heavy strategic phase that requires a lot of skills and experience to complete. And this is where we as professional organizers step in. This process only needs to happen once but it can be quite taxing and very overwhelming for anyone who's not used to it. So if you need help here, that's okay. I highly recommend that you hire a pro to help you through it. 
Then we move on to number two. Once your system has been implemented and you are organized, it's time to make sure we don't have bottlenecks, and that can take a moment to figure out. But that's where tidying up comes in as the next piece of the puzzle. This means that you are regularly putting things back into place so that the next step can go smoothly. For example, if you have tools in the garage and you take them to the basement for a fix, they have to go back into the garage once you're done. You can't just leave them on the floor in the basement, right? If you do that, the person cleaning up would have to pick up the slack and it would slow down the next rotation of the process. So that can take a moment again to figure out, but it needs to be tested. Tidying up is not a brainy task at all, but it does require quite a bit of energy, especially if you rely on people who cannot or will not fulfill their part of the deal. So remember the example I gave earlier about kids throwing their toys around? Well, that is a classic example of a bottleneck where you need to step in and tidy up before you can clean. And the same thing actually happens at work, right? In your work environment. Anytime you have more than one person who is involved in the system, everybody needs to be clear on their part and the expectations. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. Somebody's gonna drop the ball. Then finally, we get to number three, and that is cleaning. This is all just about keeping the systems running by giving it a good scrub every now and then, you know? Pure maintenance here. So there's no dirt anywhere, no dust. The car gets filled up, stock gets replenished, you get it. This is by far the simplest and most straightforward part of the three steps, but it's also the most labor intensive. And because it's the most labor intensive, this is where it often makes sense to delegate. You already have the system up and running and there are no decisions to make anymore. They're all done. So anyone you outsource to can now simply just follow directions. And when I speak to overcommitted business owners, this is usually the first place we start looking at in order to free up time. Maintenance is such an underrated time suck and it keeps coming back at you again and again and again. So if you can take some of that off your plate, you win back a lot of your time. All right, so with that said, I hope you can see that organizing, tidying up and cleaning are three very distinct activities with three different outcomes. Tidying up and cleaning focuses on reducing bottlenecks and maintaining cleanliness in the short term, right? Organizing involves establishing systems that are effective and provide long-term productivity, very different things. And if you recognize the differences here and you prioritize organizing as that foundational step, you are going to unlock so much more efficiency in your life. Understanding these differences will also help you understand who to delegate to and who to ask for help because they all require different professionals. Like I said, you can hire me to set up your systems all day long, but believe me, you do not want me to clean your home. I can organize anything, but maintenance is not my forte. It's one of those things that I delegate as much as possible because I'm not good at it and I just know I save so much time there. There's nothing more efficient than having the right person for the right job. So think about yourself and your expertise and preferences in what to take on and what to delegate. So to sum up, how does all of this affect you? Well, if you need help with organizing, don't feel bad about it. It's not the same as not being able to pick up stuff off the floor and it's not the same as not liking to clean. There are different things. If everyone could organize, everybody would. It's not something that comes naturally to most people. Remember, because you first have to set up and learn the system, and that is very skilled work. If you find it difficult, it is because it is difficult. It is a skilled profession for a reason. So one more time, having systems in place is not the same as being able to maintain those systems. I had to do a lot of explaining back in the day to potential customers, so I know that this is a stumbling block for many people. And I get it, when you are new to a topic or a situation, it's hard to know what you don't know. So I hope this lesson cleared up some of that for you.
The good news is that anyone can learn how to be more organized and my organizing formula is definitely going to help. So next up, we're gonna jump into the first piece of it. That lesson is called What's Innovation? And I will meet you there. <laughs>